on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits, a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number seven of the Beat on Bits podcast. I have with me today Vivian, whom you may know better as Shocks Edmonton Woman. Say hi, Vivian. Hi, everyone. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I've known Vivian for quite a few years, back in the days of Forever 21. Oh, good old days, yeah. The retail life. Now we're all grown up doing uh, big boy and big girl stuff. Um, so, let's just get into it. So, what kind of stuff have you been involved with lately? What do you, where have your passions led you? And can you share some of those passions with us today? Yeah, um... I, I guess now we're like kind of touching on like the big boy and big girl jobs and all that experience and stuff. It's kind of interesting to look back where we started. Mm -hmm. So Forever 21 was kind of like where I first started with everything, just kind of getting into the work field and actually making my first paycheck and experiencing what it was like. And from then, I guess it came a long way where I went through several different jobs and I guess I found my calling. Um, in the third year of university when I met a couple of friends who got super involved in like student groups and stuff and mostly around the topic of mental health and ever since then there's no turning back so I just kept doing more and more and I guess lately what's been interesting in my life is actually I feel like the last year and a bit a lot has happened um, a lot of realization in terms of where I want to be like for instance I guess like career aspects, uh, graduate from the university, what's next, I'm still at the university working there full time, so I never really left. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess I don't even really know what's happening the next little bit, I just feel like I've been doing a lot of random stuff here and there. So uh, if we can go back a little bit, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, sparked your interest so much about mental health? Yeah, so... I guess I've told the story so many times, but I, I still get emotional every time I share it, but it, it's more so of like a personal reason. Um, I've done a lot of talks about like my personal experience as an undergrad with uh, mental health, just because like me personally, I'm diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And I've met a lot of great friends along the way who struggle with the same issue, but they unfortunately didn't have the support I had or they didn't reach out in time. So, I lost a couple friends to suicide, uh, pretty heavy topic to share, but mm -hmm. we're not going to go in depth. But yeah, that majorly became the decision for me to work on mental health advocacy and kind of look into like the mental health services today and see what are the inadequacies and like things that are not working out and how can we better reach out to people who struggle uh, with this kind of, I guess, diagnosis. So that kind of became the starting point. And after a while um, undergrad was fairly difficult of course if you have like depression and anxiety because it is the very fast-paced environment and yeah, it for sure. does get really stressful so I was fortunate that I finished my undergrad so that's an accomplishment and I always tell my mom that like hey at least I didn't drop out and I'm graduated so yeah, yeah it it's great, and I, I guess from then on, I still remember something that I shared with my friends that if one day one of us is lucky enough to not say recover, but kind of thrive in the sense, um, know how to cope with it, then we should do something meaningful and give back to the community that supported us. And it turns out the three of us who agreed to that only, there's only me left, so. Oh, so yeah. there was kind of like, it started with three yeah. And you all had the same goal, yeah. and you all kind of made the agreement, and now you're the only one who's like still going forward with it? Yeah, um, yeah. well, it, it was unfortunate because those two passed away. So, oh. Yeah, so th that kind of stuck with me for a long time, and it still sticks with me now. And even with my friend who passed away, I think, back in 2015, Evan, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. he just kind of became that additional motivation for me to keep doing what I'm doing. Oh, that's yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. hmm. Uh, and then here I was, like, before you got into all the serious stuff, I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm the one who set you on that track. Because in first year, you asked me about <laughs> some volunteer opportunities. Yes, and I yeah. pointed you to a friend. I'm like, ha, yeah. I did that, but not really. <laughs> no, you did. I, I, I think, like, the people I met along the way, like, they shaped me in, like, different ways, like, for the good, too, right? And 
even just thinking about back then in the first, I guess, even end of high school, first year, second year, I was just one of those students who would just be at a cubicle the whole day and try mm. to cram information in. And like, little do I know, there's so much more you can learn from just actually going out there and doing things. So I, I'm very lucky to have friends like you to like push me and let me know what's available out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm glad I actually got out and explored what worked for me and what didn't. So. Yeah, that was actually one of like the more critical years of my life that kind of brought me down the path and made me realize what I'm passionate about. Cool. Mm -hmm. So if there's like anyone potentially listening with my millions of followers and stuff that I <laughs> totally have right now, what would you recommend for someone who is more interested in like maybe learning more about mental health or kind of like thinking about things differently with their own mental health issues? Mm -hmm. So I, I just recently came back from Shanghai and that one week of, I guess, travel, I realized a lot of things. So I got sponsored by the World Economic Forum to go there to implement a seven day project on mental health. And my initial proposal was basically on how to break barriers between uh, people of like traditional cultural backgrounds and talk more about mental health. Because like me growing up from a traditional immigrant family, my parents never talked about mental health. So going into university as like the first child, I didn't really know what these feelings are and like telling my mom hey I'm stressed out I don't know if I'm depressed but I feel like it's heading that way and her immediate response was basically like oh like you'll slip it off or just like, study harder yeah <laughs> yeah and it's just like it's just a phase so that phase never went away it stuck with me st still uh, up till now so kind of knowing um, the impact it has on like individuals who are like growing up in a traditional family that doesn't talk about these things and I, I talked to like a couple international students they don't even have a definition um, for mental health back at home oh wow yeah so that became my major project I went to different universities did like um, pretty much street talks or is this street talks like just like kind of like pop-ups to like talk to the locals and like not on the streets and ask them like hey do you know about like the common mental health diagnosis or like what is your mental health literacy uh, level at and stuff like that mm -hmm. and surprisingly I, I kind of expected it just because like understand the culture but when you actually was in Shanghai yourself you didn't realize that it was actually that bad until you're there and like people are basically avoiding you when you're talking about oh, mental health so because yeah. it is basically a pretty sensitive topic and I understand that and I think what hit me more was um when I visited one of the universities, like assuming that the students in the psychology department would be more open-minded, mm -hmm. same thing. I asked them to share a story about, hey, like it doesn't necessarily have to be your personal struggles or whatever, but if you can talk about a time where it like personally touched you that you had a mental health like, struggle or something like that, you can like share with me and I'll kind of collect it as like research. They were very reluctant to like share their own personal stories but they have like no problem sharing like oh like a friend of a friend's story or like I heard from a friend that like they struggle with this blah blah blah. Is so, that more mostly just like a, a cultural barrier kind of thing or what's the... Yeah I, I think like in the environment they're raised up in like this is not a topic that they talk about a lot and even in like the national plan like in China they're pushing more for like oh more mental health conversations uh, more like recruitment of like mental health professionals and stuff like that but when it comes down to actually on the grassroots like you still see that stigma there and like personally being involved in like at the grassroots level and having so many different conversations with so many different people like I truly think that it's important that the people at the grassroots are able to like talk about this before like higher level decision making bodies are trying to like shove these things down their throat yeah because like prime people on it first yeah because it's very like obvious that these people are still not talking about it and you would think that people in university the younger crowd would be a little bit more like tuned in and like yeah i wouldn't say comfortable but like they'll be more open-minded about talking about things like that so. yeah especially in like a bigger city like shanghai right yeah so, yeah but it wasn't like that at all yeah like for the most part it was kind of interesting because i had a really like a, like a contrast that like I saw, so like my group of people that I, I interviewed uh, selectively, I chose like basically people from different age groups, and also like most of them are locals. But I also interview like expats, which are um, people that move from North America to live in Shanghai to see mm -hmm. what the differences are, and like strikingly enough, um, 
the people who actually move from a Western country, they're so open to talking about their story. Mm -hmm. And like I had this one girl that shared with me in detail of like her suicide attempt and like oh, wow. the letter she wrote to her family before she decided to take her life. It was explicit. And while on the other end, like the other locals, like young students were talking about like, oh, like, like a friend of a friend kind of went through this situation. And one thing that kind of stood out for me was I interviewed this one person that's like kind of like a young businessman and he originally um, did his advanced education in the States but he moved over to Shanghai to work so he speaks like perfect English he's like he grown up in a westernized culture but when I asked him to share his mental health story he kind of resorted to the same thing that like the locals would do so that was actually kind of cool to see that difference because like assuming that his family probably raised them in like a traditional mindset even though he's in a westernized westernized country then like he still acted the same way as like most like people in the east would do to the mental health topic so that was interesting what when they say like a friend of a friend has a story mm -hmm. do you, does do you get the vibe that like it's actually a friend of a friend or just like them masking their own yeah. stuff yeah, that that was a discussion I had with my teammates too over there. They're like, "Oh, are you so, like were you suspecting that this might be them?" And they just put on a front and say that, yeah. "Oh, actually, this is a friend, but it's it's not me." So yeah, yeah. that that could be possible. Like, I I didn't want to be invasive and be like questioning them, but it was kind of interesting to see that like difference between like the two type of people. So I guess it was like crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. so what what do you and like. I know it's it's not an easy question by no means, but yeah. like, what do you think has to happen for people to get more comfortable with the idea of like actually presenting their problems to someone else and like talking about their own issues with that? Yeah, like there's no clear solution. I would say, um, even being in a position of like doing advocacy work in the last few years, I I really find value in just initiating conversation. You always need that one brave person to be the starting like point where you talk about an uncomfortable topic and that would kind of create a ripple effect where more people will kind of chime in and share um i guess from personal experience when i first came out and like talked about my experience to a large audience i didn't expect what like i didn't expect some of my friends that were very like quiet or like you didn't expect them to have like their own struggles to like reach out to me personally through mm -hmm. inbox so basically like a handful of friends like that both of us know um you wouldn't ever guess that they're struggling and they would just reach out and say hey like i like heard about what you talked about or what you shared like i personally like struggle with this but i don't tell a lot of people like what are the resources you have used or like what did you find that worked out for you and that was when I saw the power of just being that first person to start the conversation because it kind of creates this comfort zone or like safe zone for other people to be like oh I know somebody who actually went through this and they are able to come out and talk about it so it's actually not as abnormal as they think it is yeah yeah so th that's the same idea with um Shanghai I guess when I talk to the press about my project and uh, I just told them like yeah like I personally struggle with like depression and anxiety too and most of them were very surprised because they were like their first comment was basically like but you look so normal but what do they expect you to look like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I'm just like well you wouldn't expect somebody to be always down and upset that like usually is not mean they're like depression doesn't just mean they're always sad yeah yeah and for me I think I recognize myself as a pretty high functioning person that struggles with depression and anxiety so I try to explain to them that yeah like even for me I can have a great day and still look like sociable and like happy and all that but like I personally do struggle with these things but is not written on your face so that's why we need to talk about it because some people like you can't tell yeah mm -hmm. hmm. yeah that's so what are some of these like resources or uh, I guess like techniques that you share with these people who come to you for advice on it is it very person to person or is there like some general things that can really help a lot of people or mm -hmm. yeah so I usually would like to kind of understand um, where they're struggling I don't usually ask for details if, if they're comfortable sharing like I welcome that and uh, I usually draw my own boundaries too just because you can only help people when you're healthy yourself and some stories do get really heavy so 
I ask them specifically where what they're comfortable with like you can't just go into it and be like maybe you should see a therapist because some people might not be looking for that they might just be like oh I really just want somebody to talk to and sort out my thoughts so that becomes the difference between if you're reaching out to a counselor or a psychologist because there is like a difference where counselor is supposed to guide you through your life decisions and stuff like that where like mostly clinical psychologists actually diagnose you and like give you the drugs yeah basically identify that like oh there is like a disorder or whatever going on <laughs> so yeah whatever they're comfortable with and i'm not in any position to give any professional advice so i'll just be like hey these are the list of resources like i know that you can reach out to and it's especially hard if you're no longer in school um that's usually the crowd that i get after they transition out of university and they don't exactly know where to go and like i guess the employment climate is also also not that great right so with people that don't have benefits or people like that can't even find a job and like have that income to go see somebody that's in the professional th field then what options do they have and like good thing that there's a lot of nonprofit organizations out there that actually provides these kind of services for free or whatever amount you can pay hmm. so they can like resort to that first and kind of see where it takes them but the, the sad thing is like they're always like underfunded and they can only take like the same person once or twice so oh yeah that's too bad and that, mm -hmm. that's all kind of just like Nonprofit organizations getting their funding from like government grants and yeah, this and that, right? Pretty so much. Yeah. Funding doesn't sound too abundant in that field. Is that something that you're like pushing for more of, or like do you know any mm. groups doing that? Yeah. So I I know a couple organizations that are actually um, very active in the community, but it, it's always hard because there's always like all these passionate people passionate people that want to do great things and they want to start up all these organizations but people never really see the value of working together so it gets really like patchy in the, like Edmonton area where there's a lot of people starting up new organizations and all of them want funding and becomes like a competition mm -hmm. where the pool actually shrinks because well everybody's doing the same thing and they're unwilling to work together and they're competing for one pool of funding it then gets kind of like it well, sounds kind of silly. Why, why are there so many and not just like, why, why is nobody merging? Yeah, no, that, that's the thing. And like me, myself, I'm not usually a fan of creating something for the sake of creating something. If there's something that works and has been around for a long time, I l would really encourage it to look into expanding or just somehow like improving from the old ways. So that's definitely something moving forward I hope to see see it happen more but again like not everybody is always in that collaborative mindset and like unfortunately the environment and like the situation now is everyone's very competitive regarding funding and they get a little bit tor like territorial so it's kind it of seems, sad it seems like a uh, like counterproductive it is in yeah a bad way <laughs> yeah it is so i don't know i guess in order to resolve that i think at a certain level it, it's like people's ego get in the way and like yeah, to have communicate this clearly that this is for the people you're hoping to serve and it's not just for the sake of your organization because you started your organization just to serve the people who needs it. So It almost sounds like yeah. a few of these people who start their own thing, like they have their own mental health issues and like that's just going to be their outlet is creating their oh own little God. thing to help others. Ah! <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Ah, that's bad. <laughs> Oh, that's so bad. Feel free to no. call anyone out to our, our massive audience no. and then maybe you can make some waves. Take one down and they'll all domino over. Oh, oh my god, that's even too offensive. For and me. then a, a big person <laughs> will come and, and pick it all up and, you know. No, no, I, I'm sure they're all great people. It's just we haven't found a method that worked out. So. Okay, that's very diplomatic of you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not about diplomacy here. Well, whatever. It, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. You like. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, have a. <laughs> have to be careful what I say. <laughs> yeah, fair yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. We don't want to get you in trouble. Even though there's probably only like maybe like 30 people who will watch this, but you never know how influential know. those 30 are. Yeah. Yeah. So but. I guess like on the note of kind of like working together, I'm actually, I'm at my like last two weeks at my current job mm -hmm. and I gave like a presentation uh, just cause like every week someone from the team has to give a presentation yeah. and I made mine about like uh, lessons learned over the past um, like year at my job and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then one of those that I had was like, Things are a lot easier when you realize like we're all on the same side of something like trying to work towards the same goal yeah and in the context of like this like our i'm not going to say where but like in a, 
a bigger company where there's like business people and like engineering and and like management and stuff like that mm. um sometimes there's like like on these daily calls that we have uh what the hell just happened to my computer hopefully that's oh it's a screen too okay never mind oh i got it put you out there but yeah sometimes there's like disagreements on these daily calls with um people in the in the business team and mm. people uh on the engineering side because like the people on the business side, they're all the sales people and they want to like uh, promote this amazing thing that hasn't been built yet to the clients mm -hmm. and stuff. So they sometimes make these like empty promises without consulting the tech people. And then um, it just gets really messy. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's like a few instances where they're asking us for these things. We're like, okay, well, we can't do these things for you because blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then they get mad. But then it's just kind of like it really hurts the things that we are able to do as well. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, and sometimes we kind of like just click and it's like, okay, we have to drop this and then, okay, stop wasting our time so we can do the actual things that we need to for you mm. because we're both building the same thing and you're just trying to interfere when really we should be working together. Mm. And sometimes they realize that. And sometimes we have like really successful, mm. um, like periods of work. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, things get a lot easier when you're on the same side of things yep. in almost in, in many many areas yeah everything so yeah but people don't realize that so that's kind of sad but there's there's hope in humanity <laughs> are you sure <laughs> oh yeah pretty, pretty oh. optimistic so yes. I, I i blew my own mind today huh. because I, i've dropped a a really deep quote about that on like just <laughs> just randomly. a random quote <laughs> yeah just randomly i got bored so i just came up with this quote about yeah. humanity because one of my coworkers is like, man, I have no faith in humanity. And I'm like, well, <laughs> if you have faith in yourself, you can have faith in humanity because you are a part of humanity. No, no, it's, it's true. hundred percent true. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I, I'm usually pretty cynical, but I try not to. It just, yeah, it, it depends. And I, I still strongly believe that like, like our people, even like people our age that are young in this community are the foundation of how I guess our world's gonna be moving forward in the next couple years and it's very important that we adopt like I guess strategies that actually bring people together and promote the value of actually collaborating instead of being competitors because we've been in that position for too long and seriously has been detrimental to like I guess a lot of parties too and, uh, and I think that's also why uh, one of my career passions is to work for the United Nations just because I believe in that value of working together as a whole because we all have a role to play on right. this planet rather is whether it's like promoting sustainability climate change or like policy change everyone has a role to play yeah for sure mm -hmm. so you and people if you're watching she wants a job hook her up give me a job please <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should turn the light on it's like getting dark out yeah Okay. I don't know where your, where your light switch is. Um, it might be closer for you to grab. Oh, okay, I can do it. Okay. Okay, just just talk to them for a few seconds. I don't know who's watching, but this one. It's a live stream. Yeah. This one? No, it's not a live stream, but. Okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna cut it. <laughs> there. Now you can see. Now you can see us better. Yeah. We're yeah. Just oh, that's yeah. another uh, a first for this podcast episode. It's gonna be. I'm pre-recording this <laughs> instead of doing it the same day because I'm going to be away this coming weekend, which is when I would normally release an episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to Canmore to like do some fun birthday stuff. What, what are you doing? That's fun. Uh, I'm going to go spelunking, I think is the word. Like crawling around in a cave with like a, a helmet and a flashlight on your head. Oh, like exploring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. That's okay. going to be fun. And maybe like some cross-country skiing. Jeez. And then, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, maybe like ride a helicopter for like five minutes because it's really expensive to do more than that. <laughs> How much is it for like? It's okay. All those three activities right. are like roughly the same price. And you're doing all of them together. Yeah, I okay. I I'm, yeah. I got my bonus, so I'm gonna oh, have fun with it. Oh, it's baller a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, yeah. I guess like yeah, it sounds baller, but it's really yeah. not that baller. It's like no, you can splurge for a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's because I'm making so much money with the podcast, so I, so I can afford oh, it. Just one day. making it rain. Yeah. Now yeah mm. so yeah we're pre-recording this so it's getting dark outside it's not the usual sunny afternoon uh that my my diehard fans are used to seeing <laughs> all zero of your you. window <laughs> where all the sunlight just like seeps right through yeah so nice yeah, yeah. 
I wanted to do a zero subscriber special, but Josh messed me up and subscribed, so I can't do that. So this is the this, this is the five <laughs> subscriber special for all five of you out there. <laughs> Wait, what, what did he do? Oh, he just subscribed to my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so I can't do a zero YouTube subscriber <laughs> special anymore. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. You should yeah. totally subscribe, person watching YouTube. Yeah, or, yeah. 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 Um, anyway, I'll quit plugging myself and we'll keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah, how much time do we have left? We're, well, we're 25 minutes in right now. I oh, usually okay. go, like, 45 or so. It's, okay. Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good. You really rolled your passions and projects into one yeah. thing, I think, and that's how it should be, because if you are really passionate about something, you're probably going to do something about it, Yeah. and yeah. that makes for much more interesting listenings. And I also talk super fast, so I'll try to... Oh, no, 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 no it's, it's totally okay. That means we have more time to talk about other things. Yeah. So, other than, like, the whole mental health, I think we can also touch on uh, an interesting event that happened over the last year, <laughs> which is how I initially introduced you as the shocked Edmonton woman. Yes. So, why are you the shocked Edmonton woman? Well, thanks to Epcor, um, they gave me a huge move-in present, so... That one day in June, I woke up to an energy bill that was actually uh, priced at 11, 11k dollars. So when I first looked at it, that's killer dollars. Killer dollars, yeah, pretty much almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I first saw it, I just laughed because there's no freaking way that this is actually happening. And to myself at that time, I thought it would be a quick fix if I called them. So I just didn't think about it, and I was just like, okay, I'll call them tomorrow th first thing when I get to work. And so I did. And to my surprise, it didn't work out as smoothly as I thought it would be. And basically, the lady that I talked to on the phone was telling me that, oh, this was your fault because you punched in the wrong address, so you have to be responsible for this bill. And <laughs> that time, I was just kind of thinking to myself because she was still talking to me, but my eyes were basically just like rolling to the back of my head because <laughs> I, I had no freaking idea that she would tell me to pay it and for a second I thought about it even like oh if I broke it down to monthly payments it would just be 900 bucks a month but that's more than what I pay for rent so that didn't wow. freaking make sense so yeah. I just told her because I asked her if I can escalate it to higher management because this is seriously like a big issue at least to me and yeah, I think yeah. it's a pretty freaking big amount for you to tell somebody to, oh you just have to pay it and she basically declined my request which made no sense for her because I worked in retail and if like a very whiny customer wants to escalate it to manager I was like oh yeah go ahead like talk to my manager yeah just get out of my face yeah just exactly so I was just like oh okay well that's kind of odd so it seems like there was like no way out of this conversation so I just told her okay I'm gonna digest all of this and maybe call you back, but I'm not sure. So we hung up, ended that conversation, and I just sat in my chair for five minutes thinking to myself, did that just really happen? I was kind of angry, but still really shocked, so I, I kind of tweeted out my bill, just like a fragment of it, and pretty much told people how ridiculous it was and my interaction with this customer service rep, and my friend immediately texted me and said that you should tweet it out to news channels. And I was just like, is that necessary? Do you think you'll pick up, like, like people would pick it up? And he was There's not much like, going on in Edmonton, so... <laughs> I, I guess so. So maybe that was the season where the, they didn't really have any news and yeah, thought yeah. that this was, like, newsworthy. So my friend went ham and tweeted at all the news channel possible. And within 15 minutes, I got a call from, I think it was either CTV or CBC. So they, they called me and asked me if I want to comment about my experience with like this whole situation. And I was just like, oh, wow, that's, that was fast. And after, I guess, um, of course, all the tweet and what CBC or whichever news channel um, replied on, replied to, they were like, oh, shit. So they immediately messaged me separately and, say, and said, like, oh, I would like to like, know more about your situation. Let us know how we can help. So I, I believe somebody from higher management probably called and like, talked to me, and she was saying, like, oh, we'll look into this for you. Like, we're so, so sorry that this happened. Like, a bill that big shouldn't have even, even went out mm -hmm. without like, verification or whatever. But I'm like, well, it did. So she was saying that, oh, I listened to the recordings uh, that you had with the previous customer rep, and you were right, like, she should have escalated this. And I was just like, yeah, I just didn't understand, like, why she would say no to this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, it, it was a pretty crazy 
three day adventure. So I talked to almost every news channel in Edmonton. So that day I talked to CBC really quickly. And the next hour and a bit, like I think whichever that radio station is, um, it's probably CTV. I think they're like, oh, do you want to come in and do like a morning radio show just to share your experience? So I did that, and the the lunch hour up like that day. Same day, um, two news channels wanted to talk to me at the same time, but they wanted to come to my place and kind of have like a like like a visual of how big my place is compared to my bill. Oh yeah. So I, I I couldn't make it back because I was at work. So my partner Colton actually did that interview, and I did another interview with Globo uh, in CC, CCIS where I worked. So we were both kind of talking to media at that time, and at that point, Upcore didn't give us any concrete solutions and. We wouldn't really know. We didn't really know where this was gonna head, but I just basically kept that messaging um, and said, "Well, I want to pay you the amount I actually owe yeah. instead of paying that ridiculous amount." When, like, seriously, I had no clue what happened because my address technically isn't wrong. It's, it's the right building. It's just yeah. because it's missing the unit number. Like. I wouldn't know and instead of blaming your customers for it maybe your online system should be smarter or you should upgrade it in the sense that like it's more intuitive because it's not so after the after three days basically of that war and just freaking media and all that um Epcor finally said that okay we we won't charge them for the two months uh, of electricity or whatever that amount they charged us and I, I think at one point they hashed it out with um my property manager because technically he's the one who manages the electricity bill for the common area and stuff yeah, like yeah. that so i believe they had a chat and Epcor never really contacted me since but then you they gave you the right amount to I, didn't, I didn't pay it oh, anything so okay. i don't know what happened with that bill so yeah they just kind of canceled my account and never talked to me again so so, so you're no longer <laughs> with them no no okay yeah. i didn't even know there was another option to be honest I, I didn't know either, so they never really reached out to me to finalize anything. They just said, oh, I promise you that you wouldn't have to pay a single dollar, so... Okay, well, that works. That, that was a solution. I, I'd take it, but it was not worth it for three days of stress, so... <laughs> and that's how you get free energy for life. I wish I had free energy okay. for life, but... That's how you don't get free energy for life. Yeah, yeah. Still so the whole thing took about three days. Yeah, it was pretty fast, and it's almost kind of sad that you have to go that far to make companies act yeah. properly so like, I personally didn't quite enjoy that process like if it can be dealt with under the table I would do it but I don't know I guess it got out of control <laughs> did, so. did you enjoy the fame at least did people recognize you on the streets or at food trucks oh my god <laughs> so they don't really exactly remember why they remember me but I, I've been to like restaurants like a couple times and the, the first month or so was still really fresh in people's minds. So yeah. when I went to a restaurant, like one of the waiters would be like, oh, you're that person that's on the news. And I would just be like, yeah, like that kind of fame is different from like the fame where it was like, oh, something great happened to you or like whatever. It's like basically everybody in the entire city know that shit happened to you. So that felt kind of bad. And you didn't get any endorsements from that? <laughs> <laughs> this is not even like great stuff to share and like, it's not only within Edmonton too, basically anywhere in Alberta, even my friend's friends who lived in like small towns knows about it. Really? And like, yeah, like Ronnie's friends who lived in Cochrane, they're like, oh, like this, this shocked Edmonton woman, <laughs> she like know about her and like Ronnie would be so proud and be like, yeah, she's my roommate. Oh man, <laughs> Th that's how you know like how little goes on in like our yeah. whole province that like it's... the whole province knows who you are because oh, you yeah. got an expensive energy bill. Yeah, and because I had a shitty time, so that that was that was great um for a little bit it, it started to die down but randomly once in a while i go to the dutch and the waitress would be like i feel like i've seen you somewhere <laughs> <laughs> but i don't do you come here often and i was just like mm, no not really and she's just like ah your face looks really familiar but i don't remember where you're from so but i think i knew exactly where she saw me from yeah, but yeah, i just yeah. didn't want to like relive that so you should be like, yeah. I'm, I'm that person that you're going to give a free meal to. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> interestingly enough, after I had that kind of exposure, uh, anybody who had electricity bills or water bill problems and stuff like that, 
they started messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I think during that time when I was talking to media, there was like at least three people that are like, oh, like Epcot charged me eight thousand dollars for a water bill, and we've been dealing with it for months, and like nothing happened. And just recently, some girl messaged me and said that, oh, like Echo charged me for the same thing that happened to you, basically for like energy of the entire building, and I don't know. How to resolve it with them? Like, what did you do? So it kind of turned into this weird thing where I became like the face of like the face of the the shocked Edmonton woman. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know what you're doing. Like, you got out of it. So like, you must know how to like give me advice and stuff like that. So did anyone else tweet really about funny. it and also get famous? Well, I I told them that like, hey, well, if you do plan to blow it up, I still have to contact of like the media people I talk to. Like, oh I'm, wow, I'm all in for blowing shit up. So if you want to, I can always forward it to you. But wow. I think most of them rather like they they, they want to keep it like down low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. understandable. It's pretty freaking stressful. So it's hard to handle all that yeah. fame. Like I know all about that with like this podcast and stuff. You know? <laughs> like I just say hi on the street and and no one recognizes me. So yeah. it's pretty tough. <laughs> Get pretty lonely sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I like being invisible some days. It's yeah. good. Yeah. I think if you had to That's choose, it would be a lot better to be invisible because then you're not under the microscope yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, have have yeah. you seen that movie, uh, The Circle, with like Tom Hanks and Emma Watson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? Oh, well, I, I don't. Know, I feel like the acting is kind of <laughs> meh. Like it's really forced. But the cast, though. Yeah, the cast is good, but like they're not playing roles that like you'd expect them to play. Like Emma Watson's playing this person, uh, like this U.S. chick from like <laughs> she she her, she has like her parents are looks like they're on a farm or an acreage or something, and she oh. doesn't seem like a farm girl at all but she's like <laughs> putting on the fake like normal accent or the midwestern accent or whatever mm. you want to call it and uh she's the circle is like this company that's like it looks like google or facebook or something like a big tech company oh, okay. and their big thing is like uh, i don't think i'm gonna spoil it for anybody but i'll just tell you it anyway <laughs> their whole thing is like oh there's a new product from this company and then uh she's volunteering to be like the number one tester of it which is like this camera that you put on yourself and then it's like connected to uh like a bunch of like streaming and like chat and stuff so like she's constantly being watched by like tons and tons of people oh okay yeah mm. and then uh yeah so her life is like under a microscope with everyone watching and then like mm. she does or like sees certain things that like she wouldn't want to necessarily show everyone like yeah. she like sets up cameras in her parents house too and like sees something kind of gross one day so <laughs> yeah okay and, and then people are like and everyone's like commenting on it live and stuff she's yeah. like there's no way that no one saw that and then like yeah mm-hmm. and then yeah so that's yeah i'd prefer to not be under the microscope myself <laughs> yeah but don't you get paranoid because they're saying you like surveillance is basically everywhere like your phone or like even like your laptop camera can be hacked and- did you cover it up see what you covered oh, it up yeah i did yeah well okay that's because you you can actually if you wanted to yourself you can go like buy a program yeah and then just like enter some info and just like live stream someone's webcam oh really yeah you you, you can basically like rent these these like huh. like i've never i don't know like the exact process but it sounds super easy from like things that i've read it just like mm-hmm. you basically rent a program and you can spy on like almost any camera you want yeah, that's for creepy. like yeah. So yeah, I just I tape my 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 laptop camera, <laughs> and you should too, just cause apparently like that that Joseph Gordon Levitt movie about Snowden? Edward Snowden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like he was handing out those stickers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the premiere or whatever to put on your laptop. <laughs> I'm I'm not cool enough to go to a movie premiere, <laughs> so I have like a piece of black duct tape, but it still looks yeah, kind of discreet. I it looks, use a post-it note, so it's, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but on the topic of <laughs> privacy, like, it, yeah, it you can't not expect things that are connected to something else to be totally yeah. private, right? Yeah. Unless like you made everything yourself, like front to back, like, mm-hmm. like I have the can and the string, and you have the can, and no one else can listen to this thing, mm-hmm. even though it doesn't. This, yeah, like, doesn't doesn't physically it. work, but <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, like the analogy, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but like, okay, I'm I'm giving you like this, say iPhone for example, yeah, um, and I've spent however much money like putting in the research and development to make it, and then paying everyone involved, and then selling it to you. You've you've bought the product, but like, they haven't 
necessarily included your privacy in the price. Mm-hmm. And I think it's impossible to guarantee it anyway because you're connected to the internet, which is like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 E- even with like CCTV, I think it's probably the mm-hmm. more safer version, which is like closed circuit television. So it's only connected within like a physical space mm-hmm. and not necessarily connected to the outside. So that you can potentially own, but I don't know. It's it's really tough to yeah. uh, totally guarantee your privacy. And I think it's just unrealistic to expect it with any connected device you have. No, even like in the age where like technology is like constantly booming, there's no way. And it's kind of interesting because, like, I personally, I, for my social media and stuff like that, like, I'm pretty public because I personally believe that I don't have anything to hide, but, like, I know some of my friends don't see it that way. So when it comes to situations where, like, like a friend of mine would be uh, on this dating app and the guy would somehow find her through me, which is kind of interesting. Oh, that's awkward. Yeah, yeah, and half the time it happens through, like, either they were on my LinkedIn or they were on my Facebook and I would be like oh that's weird because I usually hide my Facebook friends so yeah, I yeah. keep their identities like pretty private but they can still go through photos that are like oh I can like tell that this person is like the person I'm like talking on this dating app with so that in that situation it really makes me wonder like is there like an extent to like how much you should limit like your profiles and stuff like that but or, yeah like, and it's even if you hide it it's yeah. really on you that you put it there in the first place because yes, yeah. once you enter it once it, you you can't delete it but is it ever really deleted <laughs> it's like the cloud like, yeah exactly really and <laughs> like speaking from personal experience of like actually developing apps that do integrate with like facebook and twitter and stuff mm-hmm. you can like specify uh i don't know if like the the policies changed with privacy with twitter and facebook like since i've done it but mm-hmm. you can like specify okay i want their email their first name their friends yeah. list mm-hmm. like and they have to click OK, but they, they don't necessarily always read, like, this app wants to access blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They'll just hit OK because they want to use the app, right? Yeah. So yeah. you hit OK, and then you give all this information without necessarily knowing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we are kind of approaching the end point, so I like to just quickly jump to <laughs> the, the music yes. portion. So I we did decide uh, some songs that we want to talk about today that I will be mixing after this. If you're just listening to the show, just keep listening and it will play. But behind the scenes, I'm going to be doing some post-production on this. Uh, Yeah, so I'm not mixing it live here, but I will be mixing it live later. So the songs that we have chosen today, uh, why don't you tell us about... I have the the list right here on my screen. So you chose Mm -hmm. these these bottom three. If you want to just comment on what they are and maybe what you like about them what you do when you listen to them are they your walk to work on a rainy day playlist or (laughs) (laughs) um so i i guess most of the songs i picked are more in the edm side of things so i uh chose the song from cash cash uh, how to love and create which is a cover done by virtue and is it ember island i don't exactly remember yeah um the other one is called Hold by Del- Daniela Andre. Is that how you say her name? I think so. Yeah, so those, those songs, I guess, for, for me, is more like a, a chill day where I need an energy boost. So pretty calm, but there's still like a touch of like energy in it. So yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear those when I play it. But yeah, I really like them. They're like, they all have kind of a similar vibe mm-hmm. and some hit a little bit harder than others, but like they have that really nice soft vocal and then like some really some crazy hard hitting like bam bam in your face <laughs> sounds to really mix it up mm-hmm. so if you're having a chill day it might just like knock you off your seat randomly <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah. so like you sent me that list uh, a few days back and then i like chose some songs that i felt like would good go uh, go well with it mm-hmm. um and uh yeah i kept my uh little k-pop flavors in there to go with it too mm-hmm. so the songs i chose is like everyone's probably heard this by now which is like silence featuring Khaled by marshmallow yeah. it's like always on the radio and it has like over 9 million views on uh youtube for the music video and i thought it goes really well with like the songs you picked and i just i really like the vocals in it too yeah like, i almost picked that song actually so, oh really yeah, yeah okay that works perfect. out perfectly yeah. yeah and then the other two are like some k-pop songs uh you, you heard that first one probably at josh's birthday a couple weeks back <laughs> it's called hello bitches mm-hmm. by cl i didn't have no idea how he knew that song but he just like yeah, I guess, played it on radio 
quite a really? bit. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've yeah. never heard it on the radio. Yeah. That's how I first um, came across it, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. What what's radio station plays that? 107. If you actually listen late night, they actually started playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, did hear yeah. some, like, like BTS, DNA, yeah, 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 yeah. and Mic Drop mixed in on, like, their Saturday night shows yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. super cool. I haven't heard Hello Bitches, though, mm. but it's... I really like that song. Uh, and then the other one is called Thanks by Seventeen. It's like a, it came out a couple weeks ago only, so mm-hmm. it's pretty new. And it's like uh, I, I think it's like a, a message to their fan base kind of thing. And they're just like, "Thanks for supporting us." And like the song is for the fans. Mm-hmm. It's called Thanks, or <laughs> in in Korean, it's called Komapta, which is just Thanks. Just thanks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to play today. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, thanks for listening to episode number seven of Beat on Bits podcast with my special guest, Vivian. Say bye, Vivian. Bye, everybody. Okay, okay. Bye, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you like what you heard today or on any episode that you ever listen to or you feel like listening to more, please show your support and subscribe on YouTube. Give it a heart on SoundCloud. Follow me on SoundCloud. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, just beat on bits. Um, Yeah, Uh, leave a review on iTunes, whatever you want to do. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Yeah.